Today we're watching Sunset Boulevard. I believe this is a 1950s drama classic film noir. I want to thank my patrons for voting for this as this month's classic movie poll winner. That being said, I know very little about this film, but I'm very excited to experience Sunset Boulevard for the very first time. There you go, right there. They uh, show the name of the movie and the street. This is filmed very uniquely, by the way. I love that. That was really cool. How they're just like literally on the street. We're showing the boulevard during the credits. That's creative. Welcome to 1950 filmmaking, folks. Awesome. I really like the way they did the credits here. Yes, this is Sunset Boulevard, Los Angeles, California. Ooh. That's the Homicide Squad. Before you hear it all distorted and blown out of proportion. Before those Hollywood columnists get their hands on it. Yeah. Maybe you'd like to hear the facts. I would love to hear the facts. How rare. Just a movie writer with a couple of B pictures to his credit. The poor dope. He always wanted a pool. Oh. Only the price turned out to be a little high. It always does. Let's go back about six months and find the day when it all started. I was living in an apartment house above Franklin and Ivar. The insistence of the person at the door. Hope they have good reason for interrupting such an important writing session. We come for the car. Why should I give you the keys? Because you're three payments behind and because we got a court order. Now, come on, the key. Relax, fans, the car isn't here. Oh, is that so? I loaned it to a friend of mine. He took it down to Palm Springs. That car better be back here by noon tomorrow. There's gonna be fireworks. What are they gonna do? I mean, I like fireworks. That's not incentive to get the car back. Free fireworks. Let's go. Well, I needed about $290. Oh, okay. I needed it real quick or I'd lose my car. Oh, look, the keys. I had an original story kicking around Paramount. Base is loaded. I covered it with a two-page synopsis. Thank you. <laughs> but I wouldn't bother. It was just a rehash of something that wasn't very good to begin with. I'm sure you'll be glad to meet Mr. Gillis. He wrote it. I was gonna say, awkward. But, you know, Miss Schaefer. truth is truth, Betty right? Schaefer. Right now, I wish I could crawl in a hole and pull it in after me. If we made it a girl softball team, put in a few numbers, might make a cute musical. Are you trying to be funny? Because I'm all out of laughs. <laughs> I'm over a barrel. I need a job. I haven't got a thing. Oh. Is Gillis, uh, Gillis is the narrator. Is he also the guy who died? I have questions. Of course I could give you $300. But I mean, I'm not going to. <laughs> Don't you know the finest things in the world have been written on an empty stomach? Now you'll have to sit behind <laughs> the typewriter. Now you'll have to write. What do you think I've been doing? I need $300. Maybe what you need is another agent. Ooh. Apparently I just didn't have what it takes. And the time had come to wrap up the whole Hollywood deal and go home. Uh-oh. Oh, they see him. Oh, we're in trouble now. Oh no! I didn't think his car would like start having issues. You think that you think that'll work? I'm kind of surprised it did. At the end of the drive was a lovely sight indeed. A great big empty garage just standing there going to waste. Perfect. Big white elephant of a place. The kind crazy movie people built in the crazy 20s. Yes, yeah, so like who lived here? Or does someone still live here? You there. Why oh. are you so late? Oh, he's expected. Why have you kept me waiting so long? Just put my car in the garage. I had a blowout. I thought maybe this... Go on in. Suppose you listen to me for just a minute. Madame is waiting. For me? <laughs> I feel like this doorman here should be intuitive enough to know that this guy's not. Do you need any help with the coffin? Call me. The one they expected who's making a, a coffin? Is this lady making arrangements for her own death? Her own death? Is it a monkey? How much will it be? I warn you, don't give me a fancy price just because I'm rich. About $300. Lady, you got the wrong man. I... Get out. I'm sorry. You're Norma Desmond. Used to be in silent pictures. Used to be big. I am big. This is a fiend. It's the pictures that got small. Oh. It was a time in this business when they had the eyes of the whole wide world. They had to have the ears of the world, too. <laughs> so they opened their big mouths, and out came talk. 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 I like her. Don't blame me. I, I'm not an executive, just a writer. You are. Maybe this is like a meeting of the stars type of thing. Just a minute, you. I want to ask you something. 
How long is a movie script these days? Depends on what it is, a Donald Duck or a Joan of Arc. This is to be a very important picture. I've written it myself, took me years. Looks like enough for six important pictures. I didn't know you were planning a comeback. I hate that word. It's a return. A return to the millions of people who've never forgiven me for deserting the screen. She's an intense woman. <laughs> Sometimes it's interesting to see just how bad bad writing can be. Okay. This promised to go the limit. The real guy arrived with a baby coffin. Oh. He must have been a very important chimp. Clearly. The great grandson of King Kong, maybe. <laughs> what it needs is uh, maybe a little more dialogue. What for? I'm sending I want with my eyes. Well, I <laughs> certainly could use a pair of shears and a blue pencil. Just an editing job. You can find somebody. Who? Oh, I'd have to have somebody I could trust. I think he's volunteering. I want you to do this work. I'm busy. I just finished a script and I'm doing another assignment. I get 500 a week. I wouldn't worry about money. I'll make it worth your while. Why shouldn't you stay here? Look, I'll come back early tomorrow. Nonsense. There's a room over the garage. Max will take you there. I felt kind of pleased with the way I'd handled the situation. Like, he was playing hardball. I liked it. Or hard to get, at least. Very good. I made you a bid this afternoon. Oh. Thanks. How did you know I was going to stay this afternoon? It is weird that he made the bed earlier in the day. She was the greatest of them all. You wouldn't know. You're too young. In one week, she received 17,000 fan letters. Sure turned into an interesting driveway. You did, sir. Where was I? In that empty room over her garage. Only it wasn't empty anymore. Whoa, what's going on? How did you get all this stuff in? All in? my belongings, my books, my typewriter, my clothes. This is wild. I'd be angry. This is an invasion of, extreme invasion of privacy and very assumptive. What are my things doing here? I brought them myself. Who said you could? Who asked you to? I did. I don't know why you should be so upset. There's nothing in the deal about my staying here. You want this job or don't you? Yes, I wanted the job. I wanted the dough and I wanted to get out of there as quickly as I could. But it wasn't so simple getting some coherence into those wild hallucinations of hers. <laughs> and what made it even tougher was that she was around all the time. Yeah, that's awkward. What's that? Just a scene I threw out. One uh. where you go to the slave market. It's better to cut directly to John the Baptist. Cut away from me. Uh. Well, honestly, it's a little too much of you. They don't want you in every scene. They don't? Then why do they still write me fan letters every day? Wow. The ego. Put it back. <laughs> I didn't argue with her. You don't yell at a sleepwalker. Two or three times a week, Max would haul up that enormous oil painting and we'd see a movie. That sounds fun. They were silent movies. She'd sit very close to me, just becoming a fan. I guess I don't have to tell you who the star was. They were always her pictures. She's an egomaniac. Is this an early example of a narcissist in film? Because, wow. Still wonderful, isn't it? Haven't they got any eyes? Have they forgotten what a star looks like? I'll show them. I'll be up there again, so help me. Oh, dude. Eccentric. That's the word that best describes her. Sometimes or a word. <laughs> bridge game in the house. The others around the table would be actor friends. Dim figures you may still remember from the silent days. One heart. Spade. Pass. Oh, wow. They tracked him down? Or maybe they're just asking questions because they're, the house is along the, the roadway. They found your car in the garage and they're gonna tow it away. I've lost my car. We don't need two cars, we have a car. All handmade, cost me $28,000. That is crazy amount of money for that time period. The last week in December, the rains came. It came right through the old roof of my oh, room no. above the garage. She had Max move me to the main house. Whose room was this? It was the room of the husband. Uh, the husband's, I should say. Yeah. Madame has been married three times. It's a little weird that they had separate rooms, but this predates the time period when men and women were allowed to be seen in a, in a bed together, right? So they had to, I think, I think that was the rule of the land, of the land at the time. At least until the Flintstones came along and <laughs> broke that barrier. <laughs> there isn't any lock. There are no locks anywhere in this house, sir. Privacy is a thing of the past. There must be a reason. The doctor suggested it. There have been some attempts at suicide. Oh. 
She's not forgotten. She still gets those fan letters. I wouldn't look too closely at the postmarks. You send them. Is that it, Max? I better press your evening clothes, sir. Of course he does. There it was again. That room of hers. Ooh, I would want to be setting for a silent movie queen. Connected to her room with my room and no locks. It was at her New Year's party that I found out how she felt about me. Maybe I'd been an idiot not to have sensed it was coming. I would say so. I mean, she is in the market for number four. Come on, let's have a drink. Shouldn't we wait for the others? Max, champagne! Are there any others? I would not be surprised if there were not. <laughs> it's quarter past ten. What time are they supposed to get here? Ooh. The other guests. There are no other guests. Things are coming into focus a little bit. If I were him, I'd feel very uncomfortable, unless he's into it, in which case. I felt caught like the cigarette in that contraption on her finger. Yeah, that's exactly how you should feel. Although you wanted to be caught to some extent. Here. Here. I was going to give it to you at midnight. Norma, I can't take it. You bought me enough. Shut up. I'm rich. I'm richer than all this new Hollywood trash. I think she's so self-deluded, she doesn't realize they're not in a relationship. Has it ever occurred to you that I may have a life of my own, that there, there may be some girl that I'm crazy about? What you're trying to say is you don't want me to love you. Say it. Wow, right to the slap. With a slightly different music, a slightly different tone, this could be a very intense horror film. If we're being completely honest, this is, she's scary. Oh, where's he going? I didn't know where I was going. I just had to get there out you of go. there. You really need to get out of there. Like, permanently. Can you put me up for a couple of weeks? It just so happens we have a vacancy on the couch. I'll take All it. All right. Norma's not going to respond well to this. Hello, Mr. Gillis. Hello. Do you know each other? Let me help you. Betty Schaefer, Sheldrake's office? She's just a fan for my literary output. Her feelings department. I love that. <laughs> I almost feel like maybe he should have second thoughts about him staying there. I got out some of your old stories. There's one called window, something with the window. How'd you like it? Oh, I didn't. Thank you. Except for about six pages. Is there some place we can talk? I said you could have my couch. I didn't say you could have my girl. Oh, this is shop talk. I've got a few ideas. And I got a few ideas of my own. One of them being this is New Year's Eve. How about living it up a little? As for instance? Well. Yikes. Oh my Starving. gosh, he's really going for it. Philip, you're mine. Thirsting for the coolness of your lips. <laughs> Whoa! No, Philip, no, we must be strong. Does she even like that other guy? <laughs> or maybe that was just like some elaborate movie quoting thing that I don't know about. I want you to get my old suitcase and put in all my old clothes. Madame got the razor from your room and she cut her wrist. Of course she did. I am torn because mental health is important and if someone is suicidal, you're like, right, they need help and I have compassion for that. But I kind of feel like there's at least a possibility she did this to get him to come back. Like, it's a manipulation tactic. And I feel bad assuming that, but like... Joe. She's an eccentric narcissist, and I don't think it's outside of the realm of possibility. What kind of a silly thing was that to do? To fall in love with you, that was the idiotic thing. Kinda, yeah. I don't disagree with her. I didn't want to hurt you. You've been good to me. You're the only person in this stinking town that has been good to me. I'll do it again. I'm starting to lean more towards compassion until the I'll do it again and I'll do it again part. Ugh. Don't do it. Don't Happy do it. Year, Joe. Joe, you don't love her. What are you doing? You're feeding into her delusion and that is not healthy for her. I must speak to Mr. Gillis. Isn't he though? So they're basically holding him hostage now? That's how I see it at the moment. Who was it, Max? Somebody inquiring about the stray dog. You're to take the script over to Paramount and deliver it to Mr. DeMille in person. DeMille always said I was his greatest star. I never looked better in my life. You know why? Because I've never been as happy in my life. Oh, this whole thing makes me incredibly uncomfortable. That idiot, he forgot to fill my cigarette case. I'll get you some. You're a darling. <laughs> Stick him up, Gillis. Stick him up or I'll let you have Wow, what are the odds? Would you believe me if I told you I stayed with a sick friend? Distorted, but true. Shellrake likes the angle about the teacher. What teacher? Dark window. Come on, yes. Got them all hopped up about it. 
Now, if we could sit down for two weeks to get a story. I'm sorry, Miss Schaefer. I've given up writing on spec. Thanks, anyway, for your interest in my career. It's not your career. It's mine. I'd kind of hope to get in on this deal. I like her. <laughs> Madame is wanted on the telephone. Paramount Studios. Yes. Now do you believe me? I told you to know what... Wait till you hear what they have to say. It is someone by the name of Gordon Cole. He says it's very important. It's important enough for Mr. DeMille to call me personally. The very idea of having some assistant call me. You're not going to talk because it's not DeMille himself? This is foolhardy. She's going to let Ego ruin what could have been a great thing About for her. About three days later, she was good and ready. The shadow over the left eye is not quite balanced. <laughs> Thank you, Max. Max is very unique as well. I just, something about the, Max is very interesting to me. It's off. The whole thing is off, I tell you. How have <laughs> you been, Miss Desmond? Open the gate. Sure, Miss Desmond. Come on, Max. They can't drive on the lot without a pass. Miss Desmond can. And teach your <laughs> friend some manners. Tell him without me, he wouldn't have any job. Because without me, there wouldn't be any Paramount studio. You're right, Miss Desmond. <laughs> Norma Desmond is coming in to see you, Mr. DeMille. It must be about that... Awful script of hers. Uh-oh. It is awful. Don't you want to come along, darling? I don't think so. It's your script. It's your show. Good luck. I mean, hopefully he takes advantage of the fact that he's on the Paramount lot. Maybe go see uh, Sheldrake and Betty. You read the script, of course? Yes, I did. Then you could have picked up the telephone yourself instead of leaving it to one of your assistants. Hmm? Uh, Gordon Cole. Oh, boy. Maybe Gordon was calling about something else altogether. Get me Gordon Cole. Right. Smart man figuring out what Gordon wanted before he uh, tells her the truth about her <clears throat> script. Hello, Olga. <laughs> Let's Aww. get a good look at you. Norma Desmond. Oh, look, these Norma people Desmond. love her. I thought she was dead. This is quite light. Nice. I'm glad she's having this moment. Although... It could have the nasty side effect of feeding her ego and narcissism. It's that car of hers, an old Isada Fraschini. We want to rent it. Thank you very much, thank you. So nothing to do with her. That's a, a blow, unfortunately. She's about to be devastated, I think. We'll be working again, won't we, Chief? We'll make our greatest picture. Now that's what I want to talk to you it's about. It's a good script, isn't it? Ooh. It'll be a very expensive picture. Oh, I don't care about the money. I just want to work again. The studio always cares about the money. Nothing would please me more, Norma, if, if it were possible. And remember, darling, I don't work before 10 in the morning and never after 4.30 in the afternoon. She is not hearing. Oh, Miss Schaefer. I'll be with you in a minute. If there's anything in dark windows you can use, take it. It's all yours. Well, for heaven's sakes. Come on in, have a chair. Interesting. I mean it. I'm just not good enough to do it all by myself. I like that she's, like, aware of that. Couldn't we work in the evenings? Six o'clock in the morning. This next month, I'm completely at your disposal. Artie's out of town. We could work at your place if you want. Yeah, that would go over great. Well, goodbye, Norma. We'll see what we can do. He didn't tell her? Goodbye, dear. Ah, she's walking away from there thinking that there's a chance her picture is going to get made, and that strikes me as most unfortunate. Couldn't have gone better. It's practically set. Of course, he has to finish this picture first, but mine will be his next. Tell him he can get another old car someplace. I'll buy him five old cars if necessary. She was absolutely determined to be ready. Ready for those cameras that would never turn. It's kind of sad to me that, like, even here, in this film, that was released in 1950, like, going through such extreme measures for beauty and yada, yada, yada. I don't know. So little has changed. If anything, you know, things have gotten more extreme. And that's... I don't know how to feel about that. You went out last night, didn't you, Joe? Why do you say that? I just happened to know it. I had a nightmare and I screamed for you. You weren't here. What were you? Hmm. Is he meeting with Betty? Norma, you don't want me to feel that I'm locked up in this house. Of course not, Joe. It's... Well, I kind of thought he was. Just a little bit. You haven't done anything? Of course you haven't. I wouldn't let you. See... That sounded very much like a threat to my ears. I was born just two blocks from the studio. Naturally, they expected me to become a great star. Well, they didn't like my nose. Oh. Slanted this way a little. 
So I went to a doctor and had it fixed. And they were crazy about my nose. Only they didn't like my acting. <laughs> Should have probably checked in on the acting before you changed your nose, but... What's wrong with being on the other side of the cameras? Nothing. It's really more fun. I will now kiss that nose of you. It's all if fun. If you please. <laughs> May I suggest that if we're ever to finish this story, you stay at least two feet away from me. <laughs> True. The first time you see me coming any closer, I want you to take off a shoe and clunk me on the head with it. <laughs> Which should be her default as an engaged woman who seems to like uh, Joe here a lot more than her fiance. I'm not inquiring where Mr. Gillis goes every night. It is just that I'm greatly worried about Madame. Makes sense. That would be his priority. And we're not helping her any. Feeding our lies and more lies. Yes. Getting yes. yourself ready for a picture. You must understand, I discovered her when she was 16. I made her a star. And I cannot let her be destroyed. So you're the reason that she's a ego egomaniac? I directed all her early films. And she's turned you into a servant. It was I who asked to come back, humiliating as it may seem. I was her first husband. Wow, okay. Didn't see that coming, but that's... Why is he still there? I mean, obviously he cares about her more than anything in the world. Why doesn't she love him? Why don't they just make the movie? It seems like she has the resources, she's got the director. Oh, she found the script. The fact that it's Untitled Love Story is not going to help her mental state. I got a telegram from Artie. He wants me to come on to Arizona. He says it only costs $2 to, to get married there. She doesn't want to get married well, Why don't you? We can finish the script by Thursday. She's obviously in love with you, Joe. I'm not in love with him anymore, that's all. What happened? You! Dummy! How come he never realizes people are in love with him? Alright, maybe he knew a little bit more on this one than the last one. It wasn't until I got back to that peculiar prison of mine that I started facing the facts. Yeah, you gotta get out of there. You never should have come back. She was a fool not to sense that there was something phony in my setup. And I was a heel not to have told her. Yep, yeah, both of those are true. May I speak to Miss Betty Schaefer? She must be home by now. Hey, Betty! She's calling Betty? It's about Mr. Gillis. You do know Mr. Gillis. Who are you? What do you want? What business is it of yours anyway? I'm trying to spare you a great deal of misery. Oh no. Ask him again. Better yet, why don't you come out and see for yourself? Sunset Boulevard. Whew! That was a moment. I need you as I've never needed you before. It's not gonna work this time. Right? What are you gonna do, Joe? She gonna has do? a gun! She has a gun! Oh my gosh. Twice in the back, once in the front, I think. <sighs> this is where you live? You bet. I didn't come here to see a house. What about Norma Desmond? That's what I'm trying to tell you. This is an enormous place. Uh, I don't like the way he's handling this. I don't like his tone. Older woman who's well to do. A younger man who's not doing too well. Can you figure it out yourself? I haven't heard any of this. I never got those telephone calls and I've never been in this house. I'll get your things together and let's get out of here. That. Listen to her, Joe. Back to a one-room apartment I can't pay for. Do you love me, Joe? Joe. Oh, sweetie, be practical. I've got a good deal here. Joe. Maybe it's not very admirable. No, it's not. You and Artie can be admirable. I can't look at you anymore, Joe. How about looking for the exit? This way, Betty. I'm so disappointed. You and Artie get back, if the two of you ever feel like taking a swim, here's the pool. Wow. Cold-hearted. Thank you, Joe. He didn't do it for you. He's packing? Wait! He's gonna leave? I don't know what to think. It's a little too dressy for sitting behind the copy desk in Dayton, Ohio. So he's... Why would he leave Betty, though? Like... Just go back to his original plan? I can't face life without you. And you know I'm not afraid to die. It's between you and yourself. Now I suppose you don't think I have the courage. Oh, sure, if it would make a good scene. You don't care, do you? But hundreds of thousands of people will care. Oh, wake up, Norma. You'd be killing yourself to an empty house. What about the studio? What about Demille? He was trying to spare your feelings. The studio only wanted to rent your car. He told her. 
You tell her, Max. Come on, do her that favor. Tell her there isn't going to be any picture. Madame is the greatest star of them all. He really believes it. I will it. take Mr. Gillis's bags to the car. There's nothing tragic about being 50. Not unless you try to be 25. Sorry. What is she looking at? No one ever leaves the star. Oh no. She's gonna shoot him. Maybe it's an accident. She's got the gun. Joe! Here we go. It happened. How has he been narrating this whole time? Is Max gonna like, go to jail for her? Like, what the heck? This is where you came in. Yeah. Funny how gentle people get with you once you're dead. <laughs> Did she kill the chimp too? Even if she got away with it in court. Crime of passion, temporary insanity. Those headlines would- You know what? She could get off with the temporary insanity. She's been temporarily insane for 20 years and Max is to blame for that. Did you catch him trying to steal something? Or find he had stolen something? Newsreel men are here with the cameras. Tell them to go fly a kite. This is no time for cameras. That's all she cares about, probably. Tell Mr. DeMille I'll be on the set at once. She's like, this is, is her last chance at lasting stardom, I guess. Maybe? Wacky. You'll pardon me, gentlemen, but I must get ready for my scene. She just thinks she's in a movie right now. She's gonna get that insanity plea. Lights! Wow. What is the scene? This is the staircase of the palace. What? They're waiting for the princess. I just want to tell you all how happy I am to be back in the studio making a picture again. You don't know how much I've missed all of you. Take her away. And those wonderful people out there in the dark. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. It's over, right? Because it's my guess. I just, what in the world just happened? I think that was brilliant and insane. If you've ever wondered how to get away with murder, I, I think we might have just witnessed it. I can't know for sure, but my guess is she is primed more than anything for an insanity plea that's gonna be very effective in court. I feel so sad for her and her delusions and Max for feeding her lies all these years. It's one of the most insane things I've ever seen in my life. I can barely wrap my mind around it. Um, this was a great film. Oh. Fantastic. The performances, the music, the cinematography, everything was very enveloping. Yeah, I just, even though we, we kind of had a clear picture of where the movie was going to end, it still had enough going on where I was kind of guessing throughout and curious to see how it would unfold. It was absolutely astounding. I think she got away with murder. Let me know just your opinion of this film as a whole and any uh, thoughts or theories you have. Uh, let me know in the comments. I would really. Uh, love to hear from you on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Wow, 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 wow. Please, if you enjoyed this reaction, hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. And you can check out these uh, videos here, the YouTube things you might also like, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.